Um, so we're going to be doing, based on his uh, inspiration, we're going to do a similar kind of project where we use only effects and automation to uh, make as much, draw as much music as we can out of, out of it. Um, okay. So today is just a, it's a practice along class. So I suggest you open up Ableton. Um, you can duck in and out according to your own ideas about when you want to be doing what I am doing and when you have your own idea in a similar vein that you want to pursue. Um, but uh, I've made some cool sounds already just in preparing for this class. And um, I will guide you in some of my ideas. And if you have ideas as well for things to try, we can do them together as a class. But um, let me just get started and give you the basic workflow here. Um, the basic principle, I think, is um, find a sound, find a couple of knobs that change that sound, make phrases with automation on those couple of knobs, and then resample. So we'll be repeating this same process again and again over the course of the class. So um, first we need to get some kind of sound input. And there are a couple of audio effects that um, can generate some noise. So I'm going to grab the echo effect, which is one of those devices that makes some noise. So in Echo, under Character, you can turn up Noise, you can turn up Dry Wet, and you also have to turn off Gate. Gate cuts quiet sounds, and the noise is pretty quiet, so it gets cut if you have Gate on. So now you've got some noise. Let's just see right up front which of these knobs is interesting to change. So with repitch mode on, it's fun to change the delay time because we get the sense of a tape speeding up or slowing down. We've got reverb. That's kind of a nice modulation. Feedback is a nice modulation. So I'm going to try to make a phrase with automation right away, just using this. So um, I've marked out a four bars here, hitting Command L to loop this area. And I'm hitting A to turn on our automation here. If turning on, if A doesn't turn on your automation, it's because you have the keyboard selected here. So turn this off, and your A will toggle automation. We'll be doing this a lot today. Um, OK, so feedback. I like it. This is a kind of nice undulation. So I'm going to make that shape across my four bars and try to make a phrase out of it. I'm going to pick two bars. You can control click and choose a shape if you want to do um, one of these kind of waveforms. That's nice. So I like this shape. I'm going to duplicate it. Command D. And as always, like I've been talking all semester, you make phrases by repeating things, and then the second time you repeat them, make it a little different.
Nice, and we'll let it stay a little bit in. Yeah, and Qbird's advice was good. Um, whenever you start to hear a cool sound, be resampled. So I've got a track here, an audio track, set to resampling, which just means that it's going to get input from whatever I hear in my ears. So um, I'm going to just hit record and get some of this. And then give it a name, like Feedback Waves. Now you'll notice that I could repeat looping through here and record a whole lot. And it's going to all be saved into one clip. So we can pull out whatever you've resampled and pull back the edge and you'll get all the different layers that you resampled as the loop was running. So this is kind of my factory workspace where I'm going to be making sounds and then I just resample them and drag them out into this kind of messy area over here to construct with later. I'm going to do one more pass at this to walk through the same thought process. And then um, I'm going to give you, yeah, the noise is too much. Great, thanks. Um, and so I'll do this one more time, um, this thought process, and then I'll give you a moment to do it yourself. Thanks, everybody. Um, <laughs> So I liked the reverb, right? So here's another approach, which is to take a knob and play it like an instrument and improvise something. So in order to record automation, you need to have the automation arm turned on. So that's this up here. Make sure that that's on. And then um, you can just hit play. Nope. You hit, make sure the track is not on but automation arm is on, and then you can just hit the global record button and improvise yourself a phrase. Cool. All right, so I'd like to give you all a couple of minutes to try this out in the smallest, most focused way possible, which is just using the echo. Um, find knobs that do interesting things with the noise. In order to get noise, you need to go to character, turn up noise, and turn off gate. And um, use automation to either draw in shapes or record in something interesting. And then I would like you to create a resampling track, which is just an empty audio track with the input set to resampling. Arm it, hit record, and get some audio out of your creation. So we'll spend, I'll give you five minutes to do this now so you can really practice the basics. And then we'll dive into a myriad ways to develop this idea. Meanwhile, I'll answer questions in the chat. So if that's distracting um, to you, I'll just answer in the chat. I'll be quiet. Okay.
question from Wikiroot about um, automation. So it's possible that your automation is not um, active, in which case you would have gray lines and this button would be orange up here. This is the return to automation button. So maybe that's the case. Give that a click and see if your automation becomes active. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. So the next thought in my, um, the next thing I think is let's get some tone in here, right? Noise is great, um, but to make a full musical meal, we're gonna wanna figure out how to turn this into pitch. So um, all instruments work by a noise that's all spectrums, resonating something that has a very specific frequency that turns that initial noise energy impulse into a tone. And um, there are a couple of resonators in Ableton that do this principle. And I want to introduce Corpus to you um, as a really great one. Um, so we've got noise. Corpus is a physical modeler. It models an object, one of these things. Um, one of these kinds of objects. It models it in a mathematical way and then resonates whatever you send through it. Um, it's as if you like put a speaker right next to a beam, or right on a beam, or better yet, like a transducer from a speaker right onto one of these things. And it makes that thing ring. So I'm gonna pick a string. And you can tune the pitch here. We're gonna be working a lot in frequencies today just because of the way this device is built. You can't input your own note. You can only tune this dial. So um, let's just do some round numbers here. I'm gonna start with 100 and we can do overtones of 100, multiples of 100 here. So this is great, we've got some tone. We still have this kind of dynamic shape from our source um, with the automation here. So I'm going to keep that for now, but we may go back and delete some of these things as we have more ideas. So now I'm going to go through the same process that I went before, which is to identify a couple of really salient knobs here. What are the really fun ones to turn? And then I'm going to use automation to draw some kind of phrase. Spread is fun. In harmonicity, in harmonicity, maybe. Brightness, that's nice. This is an XY control for both decay and material. kind of filter. So this is something I like kind of smooth transformations in, so I'm just going to record some automation here. Automation um, arm, arm tier, here we record. some motion in the sound. Cool. I'm gonna let that stay. And 
brightness, I'm thinking, let's take a different approach. So rather than make kind of smooth ambient changes, let's make a rhythm out of brightness. So I'm going to select brightness here. It comes up as my control for automation. And I'm just going to make some short, fast toggles. And it's easy to make these kinds of blocks up if you um, select a bit of time. And then you put your mouse so that the whole bar seems selected. And then you can just drag up. So I'm going to make a little shape here. It's a little finicky where you click. Okay, I want more dramatic changes. And a darker baseline. Cool. So once you have a little bit of a phrase like this, fill it out by adding some repetition, you can select, drag, I think all of these are off the beat, I'm thinking about my meter here, I'm going to slide them on to beat three of these bars. And as usual, I'm going to suggest that you make the last one a little different. Like maybe, um... Maybe just double it. So it kind of like makes a little drum fill. Cool. Now I'm going to just throw a couple of things on here to um, fatten up the sound. So I'm going to try like a dynamic tube. Hubert has a nice idea of a limiter so we can make things really loud and it won't cross a certain threshold. Um, he, he's suggesting that we group all of these things, all of these effects, I think. So this whole group now, this whole audio effect rack, is like a, one whole concept complex. Cool. Um, I'm going to do one more thing with this corpus idea, which is to make multiples of them in a row. So I'm hitting Command D to duplicate. And now I want to make these ring in as kind of overtones of this note. So um, I'm going to make the tuning of this one be the first overtone, which is just 100 times 2. And the next one, which is 100 times 3. And now, the dry wet that we turn on each of these changes the overtones. So this is kind of like operator with the multiple um, the multiple operators that modulate each other at the harmonics. Um, so you can do kind of a picture here as well um, of these on the dry wet knobs. Just 
just to create more motion in the sound. Yeah, limiter is a good thing to have on the end of whatever big chain that we have, so putting it outside of the group makes sense. Cool, and we can fatten things up with another echo was a good suggestion. minutes to try something like this. Um, so, big picture. Um, try working with the, with the corpus and um, make yourself some dynamic shape out of these things. You could also use the tune to change the pitch dynamically um, and any other effects that you want to change the sound. I'm going to put another five minutes on the clock and um, let you work on your own project. I'll be in the chat to answer questions.
Okay, come on back. <clears throat> Next thing I want to show you is um, the frequency shifter. So check this out. So I'm I'm feeling a little bored with my with my drone, so I could record lots of this, I could do different pitches, I could do this and resample it and put it into a simpler and play this and you know play chords and stuff. Um, but I want to start getting into rhythm. So here's one way to get some rhythm, which is the frequency shifter. If you set it to ring, it does a ring modulation, which is a lot like the frequency modulation. Maybe it's the same thing as frequency modulation. Well, not exactly. Um, but basically at low frequencies, it gives you this kind of um, LFO effect. So I'm going to make some phrases out of this. I think I want it just to accelerate over the course of a bar. Like this. So a cool tool, tool for this, if you have Max for Live, is the LFO tool. So I want to play with this for a moment too. Um, the LFO tool comes in the basic Max for Live patch. Uh, not patch, there's like a um, essential three device. If you go, if you log into ableton.com and download the kind of basic packs of Max for Live devices, I think it's in the big three, um, which is one of the ones that's free for you. Um, and this is a way that you can modulate these things in real time. Um, modulate any knob with an LFO. So um, I'm just going to try mapping this to this guy. And that's just way too much, so I want to make it smaller changes. slower changes. That's pretty cool. Okay, so anytime I hear a cool sound, I should be resampling. Resample, record. Give your resample a name. Um, warble pitch shifts. Okay, I'm starting to feel a little bored with this constant tone. So now I'm going to show you using the LFO to get a stream of different pitches. So I'm going to take my LFO now and map it to the frequency on my first corpus. This is where you determine the range. So that's cool, but I want discrete pitches, so I'm going to choose random. And I'm going to set it to go pretty fast. take off some of these things, um, the frequency. 
frequency shifter, the dynamic tube. Just got a lot of reverb. Ah, from this echo. this. Let's make it more dynamic though. Let's turn on the LFO of this filter. figure out how to get some drums going on. Um, so I'm going to pull all of this back and start again from noise. I know I'm jumping around a lot. I just want to go through this process a number of times with a couple of different ideas um, and give you lots of ideas for jumping off on your own. Um, so drums. Drums start with noise. I'm going to simplify my setup here by deleting the automation on this stuff, which you can do any, any device that's automated, any knob is gonna have a pink dot. And to remove that automation, you can click it and do command delete and it will delete it. So I'm gonna go on one more quest here for drums and then give you some time to work. So noise. Should have kept, I made a really awesome drum set here a minute ago. I should have kept it up rather than deleting. Um, I made something that sounded like this. So there's one drum track, here's another. idea, which was um, to start with noise. And let's give it a rhythm. So one way to give things rhythm is with the auto pan. So if you turn on auto pan and you change the phase to all the way one side or the other, then rather than panning left and right, it's going to be more like turning the sound on and off. Turn up a mount. Oh, I'm on the wrong track. I'll drag it here. And now we want to do it rhythmically. So I'm going to switch to tempo mode. And now we've got this stream of 16th notes. They could be more punchy if I switch to this mode so we get the loudest at the beginning of the note. And you can get some nice rhythmic variation here. Um, so I'm just going to draw in against my clock here, against my grid, um, some changes in rate. Uh, I see that my some of my automation is not active because this button is orange. If yours is orange, hit the orange button. So my rate, I'm going to have 16th notes be my steady pulse, and then at the end of each bar, um, I'm going to set it to something different. So we'll jump to triplets there. Maybe this one will be a changing value, slowing down. Um, maybe this one will split the bar oops, between 
um, something a little slower, slower triplets and faster triplets. And maybe the last time will just be an acceleration. Cool, let's make it sound more like drums by adding a drum bus. So I'm gonna turn up drive, crunch, boom. This adds a subtone to it. That's kind of nice to make it a little picky on some of these. I'm gonna pick a pitch. So making a musical texture is a lot about having different cycles, cycles of different lengths um, in different dimensions. Um, so I suggest as you make these phrases, having one parameter that oscillates on like the bar level, and this one is oscillating um, with kind of a different idea. Maybe we do a different parameter that oscillates on the whole four bar level. I kind of like this oscillating, well this could be like on a two bar level. Um, and I'm just going to pick some other effect. Here's an erosion. Find a salient feature and make it oscillate on a four bar scale. I'm going to try like putting an amp on it. Cool, that's adding some more low tone to it, so it's a little more like drums. Um, if you want to make it a little more punchy and the notes more discreet, you can put on a gate. Basically, anything that's quieter than a certain threshold becomes silent. So this is a way to maybe break up a thing. Well, I'm not crazy about that. I'll leave it um, gently. Um, a little bit of tone from a corpus, like a membrane, like a drum head. That's pretty cool. Um, and now let's filter. Filtering noise is, of course, a really important part of getting different instrument sounds. Like 
this erosion is well. Anyway, you can tweak forever, but that's some ideas for making something more rhythmic. And then of course resample, layer, edit, slice. Okay, enough of me. I'm gonna put you on for five minutes, answer questions, and um, jump back in at the end. While you're working, I'm going to put together um, some music out of the things that I made before class and during class. So if that's going to distract you, you can go ahead and mute me for the next three minutes and whatever seconds, um, and then come on back. So to make a longer... Let's see, I'm going to turn this off. Um, now that I have all these materials, I'm going to work in a longer phrase. And so I've made 16 bars here. No, let's do more. So if you're interested in what the heck do I do with these now that I've made all of these weird sounds, um, I'm going to start now going through that process and talking through it. Uh, and you can, no, this is for everybody. I'm going to save this. Sorry. Um, go ahead and keep working. We'll loop back. I'll share this with everybody when everybody's done.
Okay, let's come on back. So I'm just gonna point you in a direction for what to do with this. And um, this is gonna resemble a class that I taught uh, way at the beginning of this semester. And um, so I'll point you to that as well. Uh, this is kind of like the breakbeat editing class. Um, I suggest you take each of the layers that you might wanna do simultaneously, put them on different tracks, name them, Get a sense for what they are. Pick a 16 bar phrase. Loop everything in it. So you have one big block. I think of this as like sculptor technique where you start with one big block of stuff and then you carve. So um, you could go in two directions here. One, you could go deep into this and do editing on each track to try to fit them in together um, to make an interesting phrase now out of um, all the pieces. So maybe you would like cut one to come in only halfway through. Maybe you would cut out some bits of one in rhythmic fashion. Um, to like introduce some rhythmic elements. Um, you can do as much editing as you want here to create a cool 16 bar loop. And then you can spread it all out and edit away from there. So I'm creating something that's more like an ambient track here is what I'm picturing where there's more slow changes than like quick edits. So I'm just gonna make all of these layers um, repeat a whole bunch of times. I'm gonna select everything here, duplicate, 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 Command D, and then um, start carving out a form. So like maybe I want I don't know, one way to do this would be to turn, to deactivate everything, which you can just do by selecting and pressing zero, and then bringing things in. So like I want maybe my, first the um, feedback waves to come in. And then for them to stay in. And then the drums come in, and then the other drums come in. Maybe while we're fading in one of my drones.
then I would suggest going in and making repetitions. Just like grabbing some loop and command D to do a bunch of them. This is going to build some internal. something new or take something away each for eight bars so as usual you can do my trick of taking an empty midi track putting in like a four bar phrase duplicating it out so you can kind of keep track of it. So this is a very quick, haphazard um, demonstration of what I would do more slowly and thoughtfully uh, to turn all of these materials that I've made into a track. Okay, so I know today was kind of all over the place. Hopefully it gave you a bunch of new ideas for how to just start with noise and use it to create dynamic changing shapes um, with automation and um, how also to use those automation shapes to create musical phrases and again I think that it's a, it's a pretty simple concept to make musical phrases out of your automation you just want to make things happen in time with the grid and use lots of repetition at different scales. One bar repetition, two bar repetition. Um, you can add rhythm to anything by taking small pieces and um, doing automation on the small scale. Um, and resample everything, and then figure out what to do with it, clean it up. Um, we did a whole class on just taking a mess like this and cleaning it up into a finished track. Um, and I will post the link to that here in a moment. But um, before I sign off, I just want to say hey to anybody who's new today. Uh, I do teach these classes a couple of times a week, and you can get more information by uh, signing up for my mailing list on my website. I'll post a link to that here in the chat in a moment. I do this on a donation basis, so if this was useful for you, I'd really appreciate just throwing me a couple of bucks, letting me know that this was of value to you. Um, there's a link also on my webpage for that. Um, things coming up. So Thursday, we are going to do a class all about the simpler. So the simpler is the um, tool that you're probably going to use the most in Ableton. It's useful for a million different kinds of things. Um, it's a kind of a sampler. It's also kind of a synthesizer. So I'm going to show you the ins and outs of your most useful, most used tool on Thursday, 1 p.m. There's going to be no class again this Saturday. Um, but uh, Friday night, let's see, I'm doing a concert with um, on an experimental music series on Friday evening. Uh, I'll post a link to that here in a moment. Um, and also Sunday is a really cool event I want to invite you to check in on, um, maybe even participate in if you want to. Um, it's a really cool event. So on June 21st, I don't know if you know about Mu Make Music Day, but all over the world, in all um, many, many cities all over the world, there are chapters of this organization called Make Music Day that organize um, performances of all different kinds in all different venues all over the city, all on the same day. And uh, this year, it's going to be lots of things live streamed. It's this Sunday. 
And um, I have written a piece to be a special project for Make Music Day this year that um, you can play. It's for musicians and non-musicians. Uh, it just uses a flower pot and a mallet or a glass bowl and your finger like this. And um, there's going to be a few hundred people playing this piece in groups, uh, 26 different groups throughout the day, every 20 minutes from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, they're all going to be streamed on one channel right here on my channel. And uh, these different groups are each going to play this 20 minute piece over and over again throughout the day. Um, if you want to participate, uh, stick around. I'll post a link to that as well. Um, all it would take from you is an hour of your time for rehearsal. So you'd be part of my group. I'm doing the kind of um, uh, anybody who wants to come join my group can um, come. I'll teach you the piece over the course of an hour and then we'll play it for 20 minutes and, um, and be done. So uh, if you're interested in that, stick around for the link there as well. Okay, I think that's everything. So now I'm going to hop in the chat and post a couple of these links. And I just want to say thanks to everybody for coming, and I will see you soon. Okay, so here are some of these things. Um, make music day. If you want to participate in flower pot music, here's the link. Uh, the link to my class page. I'm going to post the folder to all of the course materials. So if you want to go back and find a certain class, that link is coming up. Here are all the class links. Let's see if this works. Nope, can't post links here. Oh man, I see that my, those of you on Facebook, I can see that um, these links aren't happening yet. So 
I'll repost here. Cool, I think that that's everything. Um, give me a follow if you wanna see notifications about this. You can click the heart button above if you're on Twitch. And um, yeah, that's all, I'm gonna call it a day. Thanks everybody, see you Thursday.